Hi, this is Robert from Part Fusion Electronics. About six weeks ago, I did a video on my giant Arduino starter kit, and I wanted to do a follow-up on the making of one of the components. So this was a 10 times scale model of an LED. So the basic instruction was uh, copper tubing, six millimeter copper tubing. I actually broke one up so we can see the inside of it. So it's six millimeter copper tubing. I etched a printed circuit board made a basic design. On one side of the PCB, I have to connect into one leg of the LED. Then the LED goes through a constant current regulator and a, a diode. So that means it's quite, it, you know, it's almost indestructible. You know, you can put up to like 60 volts or something through it and it should still light up without damaging the LED. I'd sliced into the copper tube probably using a rotary tool like a Dremel um, and then slotted the, the leg copper onto the PCB and then I soldered those into place. So that made the kind of electronics part of my LED. So I'm just connecting up to a small um, coin cell battery. And there we can see the LED lighting up. And while I was um, taking that LED apart, I took another one and I actually sanded it down to a really high grit and then, or a kind of coating compound. So here you can see the inside of one of the LEDs. So this version here has just been kind of scuffed up with a um, a file. The problem with the clear LED is it's the light just kind of basically shines straight through out of the LED and you can you can't really see it on, on, on the lights and it's actually quite difficult to see in person. So there's this scuffed up LED so it's kind of the light effect you can actually see the kind of cone of light coming out from the other piece slightly. It's, I think it's a bit easier to see on the clear one. So you can see there's a kind of a cone of light. But the curved top actually has a bit of a magnifying effect. But I'll describe how I modeled this LED originally. So modeling up an LED is actually very straightforward. It's basically a cylinder a sphere and another small cylinder at the back and then you just have to take a bit of a chunk out here at the side. So it's very easy to, to model in 3D but our, our 3D printer wasn't working at the time so I had to kind of go a bit old school and try and model up the um, LED myself. So so what I had done is I had made up this form here. This plastic here is from a shampoo bottle. I then got a, a bauble from like a Christmas tree decoration, which was about the right size. Then I got a plastic, probably like a yogurt container. And this is like a drinks container. And I, so I made up this rough form, which is approximately the right shape, just a little bit bigger than uh, my desired result. To make a, a mold of this, what I used is I used um, alginate. It's kind of like a seaweed based jelly, jello type of material. You can then place your object into it. So I kind of got a cup like this, added the alginate into it, and then pressed my form into the alginate. It only takes like five to ten minutes to, to solidify. And then you can carefully remove your master. So people use alginate for make, making casts of hands and other very delicate materials. And the alginate will produce a, um, a mold of your object. It's it's quite a fragile mold. It, you'll only get maybe one or two or three kind of casts it pulls out of your, your object. I got some just bog standard plaster of Paris, mix that with water, then poured that into the mold. After that set, again, it's, it's only like 15 minutes or so to set for the plaster of Paris to set. You, I had a, a rough mold that was slightly bigger than the finished model. What I had done is, so this is this plaster of Paris. It's got a coating, which I'll explain in a second. So then I just got files and sandpaper and I just smoothed down and, and kind of sculpted the plaster of Paris block into the, the shape and size that I was aiming for. You know, it was an approximate mold and then I made, I shaped the the surfaces up here again with like a file and sandpaper and the likes. This is coated, the, what's causing the color, it's coated in a button polish, almost like a varnish and then the kind of green color comes from um, PVA blue. It's kind of like a mold release. I don't think I really needed either of those. Now that I have my kind of master made and ready for forming, I wanted to kind of cast a silicon mold of this so that then I could use that to cast finished kind of epoxy styrene resin. So to do that, at the art store, 
I don't have any of it here, but you can get a, a two-part silicone putty. I used a uh, silicone from Peebo. It's like two rubbery materials, and you just mix equal parts of the A and B together for a few minutes until you get a, a, this consistent color. Shape it around your object until you have it form and then five times, maybe 30 minutes, it, it will solidify into a, a rubber mold. And then you kind of, in this case, I had to slice it down with a, with a craft knife so I could uh, uh, extract my master. So that's the, the silicon mold made. And then I said that would go into a cup and then I would have suspended with the right directions in, in place my uh, legs into it and I would have poured in my um, resin. The resin I used for this was kind of generic polystyrene resin where you need to mix in a liquid catalyst. This stuff is horrible to use. It's a very strong smell. You want to do this outside or in a garage or a shed somewhere. So after the resin had cured, again, it, it, depending on the type of resins and stuff, could take a couple of hours or over night you will have some flashing maybe around the edges here and so I ended up just filing that down as I said I scuffed the outside of this up with file 2 to give a bit more of a diffusing effect if, if, if I was do if I was doing this again which I which I am going to look into doing it again I would probably 3d print my kind of master shape so I'd use I guess a liquid silicon like this Umo from smooth on a lot of different types of silicon rubbers you can use. A two-part silicon like this will pick up all of the details, very, very fine details, and those will then be available into your finished uh, resin cast, and then you don't need to do clean up your finished piece as much. So I probably will look to make a, another version of this type of LED using maybe the, the white pigment to get this type of diffu diffused LED effect. So kind of why does this work? Um, pretty much LEDs are made with resins anyway. So the, the so I have a kind of a range of different LEDs here from different sizes. So from your kind of standard three millimeter LEDs, your five millimeter LEDs, you've got eight millimeters. So these are just the diameter. And then I like a 10 millimeter here. You've got different sizes, you've got different shapes, rectangular, concave. So just putting more epoxy around this LED is, is relatively straightforward. And that's exactly what I had done for this object. So that means you can use resins like these. You can use your, your modeling clays to make up a template object and make it any kind of shape you want. What you have to take into consideration is, is how the light shines into the object and then out of the object. So you could make custom Christmas decorations, jewelry pieces using this, this, these types of techniques. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe and share. Thank you. Bye bye.